please make sure you pause the video and give this question some thought before moving forward. The instructions are simple enough, of course, it's asking us to evaluate the integral, but the challenge here is to decide which method we should use to do so. There are innumerable methods to evaluating integrals, but I think one of the clues here that is helpful to notice is that we have the product of two separate functions. We have p to the fifth multiplied by the natural log of p. And in those situations when you have one function multiplied by another function, often the best method to choose when evaluating that integral is to use integration by parts. So let's look at that formula. Now that is of course an intimidating looking formula and in order to use it what we need to do is define four different parts. We need to come up with a u and a du as well as a v and a dv. Those are always the four parts that we need in order to work with this type of problem. I will say that typically u is going to equal whatever the first function is. If you're in doubt that often is a safe bet but in this case of course it's going to be different than that. We have to uh, be careful here. And really the best strategy when figuring out what to let u equal other than setting it equal to the first part when you're in doubt is to let u equal the function whose derivative becomes a simpler function. I'd like to say that again because I think that's very important when integrating by parts. You want to let u equal the function whose derivative becomes a simpler function. Now consider that the derivative of p to the fifth is 5p to the fourth. And then consider that the, the derivative of the natural log of p is 1 over p. It is arguable that the derivative of the natural log of p becomes simpler because the natural log is no longer present when you take the derivative. Whereas the derivative of p to the fifth really doesn't change that much. It becomes p to the fourth, which really isn't that much simpler than the original function p to the fifth. So in this case, letting u equal the natural log of p will be the best bet because that will follow the rule that the derivative of natural log p becoming a simpler function. So once we have decided what to let u equal, we will go ahead and write that down. We can set dv equal to the remaining portion of the integral. Since we've already assigned u to the natural log of p, what's left is p to the fifth dp. So we can let dv equal the remaining portion of the integral. Now I'd like to split the problem into two halves, so to speak. On the left side, we're going to focus on taking a derivative whereas on the right side we're going to uh, focus on taking an antiderivative. So let's go ahead and take the derivative on the left side. The derivative of u with respect to p would be du dp and as we noted the derivative of natural log of p is 1 over p. When we do the antiderivative on the right side we have v and then the antiderivative of p to the fifth will simply be p to the sixth divided by 6. One small thing we need to do over here is to solve this equation for du since that is pres since du is present in the integration by parts formula. So we can basically multiply both sides of this by dp. Squeeze that in there. And the dp there and there will cancel. So we, we have du equaling 1 over p dp. We now have the four components. We have u, dv, v and du. It sounds like an alphabetical mess but once we plug it into the formula all will be well here. So let's go ahead and try to do that. And as we plug in it's going to be helpful to refer back to our work over here on the side. So we have the integral of u. Now u was the natural log of p times dv which we determined to be p to the fifth dp equals u which again is the natural log of p times v which was p to the sixth over six minus the integral of v which we again determined was p to the sixth over six times du and du was one over p dp You'll notice that this part is simply the original integral that we were trying to evaluate. It just so happens that the terms are switched in order. We have the natural log of p times p to the fifth as opposed to the original which was p to the fifth times the natural log of p. But those are 
of course, the same expression. What we need to do is clean up this term right here and then finish evaluating the integral on this side. Let's clean up our workspace first. Now, it's kind of a matter of personal preference how we want to write this first cluster of terms. One way is to move the p to the sixth out in front so that we have p to the sixth times the natural log of p, all of which would be divided by six. And in trying to evaluate this integral, we'll notice that we can cancel a factor of p because we have a p in the denominator and a p to the sixth in the numerator. So we can cancel that p and then this exponent would become a five. We'll also notice we have a one sixth present here. It's kind of hard to see that because we don't typically write the one, but there is indeed a one sixth and we can factor that constant out to the front of the integral. So we'll have one sixth times the integral of p to the fifth dp. Now the integral of p to the fifth dp is relatively easy to evaluate. We simply use a general power rule. So that'll become p to the sixth over sixth plus c, and then we also have the 1 6 that we had factored out, and then the rest of the terms in front. And then really the last thing we can do is multiply the 6's in the denominator to make a 36. And the 1 here is negligible, so we can discard that as well. And we are left with our final answer.